Hello and welcome to our webinar, Getting Started. Upload your contacts and send your first email in constant contact. Thanks so much for joining us today and welcome to Constant Contact. Today we're going to help you make the most of your account to help kickstart your email marketing journey. If you haven't already, I would encourage you to log in to your Constant Contact account so you can follow along and get started creating your master template. If you haven't, you can go to login.constantcontact.com and put in your username and password. If you're not sure of your password, you can reset it. We will also send you a recording later this afternoon, so if you aren't able to follow along or miss anything, you can always rewatch anything you need to as well. And before we dive in and to just give you a minute to log into your account, I will go ahead and do a formal introduction here. So my name is Caitlin and I'm a manager on the professional services team at Constant Contact. I have been at the company about 10 years, so I'm excited to teach you how to use Constant Contact and just bring my email marketing experience to the session. Now, I also have my colleague in the Q&A chat as well. So between the two of us, we'll answer any questions that you have. So just go ahead, click Q&A on the right side of your screen, type in your question. Those will come straight to myself and the chatter. So you may not see other people's questions, but we'll make sure to get you some answers and make sure you have all the knowledge you need to move forward after the session today. Here's more specifically what we're going to cover today. First, we'll be talking about optimizing your account settings to get you set up for success. And then we'll talk about sending your first email. We'll craft and send that email together and discuss some time-saving tips for future communications. And then we'll go through uploading your contact list so I'll show you a couple different options for getting your contacts uploaded. And then we'll finish up by just navigating the account. I'll give you a quick little tour of your dashboard to help you get started and show you some additional tools that will set you up for that ongoing success. So with that said, let me log into my account. Hopefully you're logged into your account by now and we can get started with learning constant contact. All right, so to start out, there's a few housekeeping things I would recommend setting up first, just to make things a little bit smoother later. So I wanna run through that together to begin here. Let's all go ahead and click up here at the top right. This will be the account owner's name, usually. And then we'll go to our account settings. And I just wanna make sure our profile and our business details are all filled in here. So that'll pull up here on this page. Some of it might be set up already when you created your account, but getting this set up now will help avoid any speed bumps in the future as you're actually putting together your emails and sending them out. So under our account details, we have profile and business details. Let's click edit. So for the profile details, you'll want to put your first name and last name. Just make sure that's accurate. I'm going to pretend my name is Jack Smith, and I'm the owner of Jack's Backyard Barbecue Restaurant. So I'm filling that out for him. So just make sure you have a phone number in there, probably the one for your business, country, state. And then if we hop over to business details, this is where you can add a logo if you want. I'm actually going to set that up in a different place, so we won't worry about that now. You'll choose your industry. So you can just kind of start typing what your industry is, and you should be able to find an option that fits. And then business name. I'm going to have mine be Jack's Back here at Barbecue. Phone number. 
you'll put in your real phone number. We'll say the website is jacksbarbecue.com. And the default from name, this will come into play later. This is who it looks like the email is coming from. And you can always tweak this with every email that you send, but it's also good to keep it consistent. So if we keep Jack's Backyard Barbecue as the default from name, that'll make our lives easier later. And then the address is a really important part because you actually cannot send an email without having your physical address fill in at the bottom. So as long as you put in your full physical address here, and go ahead and do that now real quick if you can, this will then populate at the bottom of every email that you send and then you won't have to worry about it. It is required by law to be there uh, with marketing emails. So you just want to, if you do it now, then you never have to worry about it again, unless you move and then you'll want to change it. But mine's looking set here, so I'll click save. And then the next thing I want to do, so we have some of our account details all set up. I am going to set up some branding for my business and get that all saved ahead of time. So once again, once I go create an email, the process will be super smooth. So that is going to be under our tools. So if you want to click on tools here at the top, there should be an option here called brand kit. So let's go to that. So what this does is it allows you to save your logo, the colors that you use, and even some images as like a brand kit. And then when you go to create an email, because that is saved, it'll pull that into the template automatically and you won't have to worry about rebranding, you know, updating all your colors every time because they'll be saved. So you can add a logo, colors, and images manually here. Just kind of put in the information and upload it and save it. Or even easier, if you have a website, you can scan it. So let's click scan your website. So then what you'll need to do here is copy and paste or type it in the website address for your website. So if you're able to pull that up, drop that in now, then you click scan for branding. And then it'll actually look for a logo, for colors, and for some images. Now it definitely pulled some good things in here for me. I'm going to, so it pulled this in for the logo. Let's say maybe you're looking at yours and you're saying, oh, that is an image on the page, but not what I want to save as my logo. That's totally fine. You can just uncheck that. And then we'll add a different image in a minute. Now the colors, it pulled quite a few. Uh, really the main ones this business uses are the orange and the brown and black and white. Light brown might be good to have saved, but the rest, I'm going to uncheck that. We don't really need that many colors saved as our branding. And then images, I'm going to uncheck those two and just stick with these main images here. You can always upload more pictures later. This is just a way to get started with building up an image library from images on your website. So now that I've selected those things, I will click next. And then let me make sure here I get the image I want as the logo. So I'll click add logo. I could upload an image if I want, but I will choose this one. It did pull that from the website for me. So now I just need to insert that. And there's the logo, there's the colors, there's my images. So I am set. Now, the other thing you can do from this page, if you want to go over here to the left, you can save all this as a theme. So once you set up your theme, let's all click on that. 
this is what will fill in to templates for you automatically as well so that just everything is there. So you can edit this just to make sure your theme is exactly the way you want. Your brand kit colors always show up in your color picker now. So the orange, I like the what it set up here for me uh, for the most part. The background being orange, inner background white, button color brown, font links, dividers brown, that all looks good. So this is kind of what a, a template would look like with this theme. You can always edit things later once you're working on your template, but I think that looks good. All right, so we have our branding set up and you'll see how that comes into play in a second. The last thing I wanna do before we dive into our email creation is come up to contacts. So let's click on contacts. Let's go to all contacts. And what I want to do here is add an email address. We, during our demo today, are actually going to create and send the email. So I just want to make sure we have one or two email addresses in here that we can all email to just for our testing purposes. So if you set up the account or whoever set up the account is probably already in here as a contact. So you could work with that one. However, if you wanna go ahead and add maybe a different email address, a colleague, just get one more testing contact in there. Let's do that. In order to do that, you'll click add contacts here in the top right. And we'll be coming back to some of these other options later. But for now, we're gonna go with this create a new contact option. And this is what you would use anytime you have just one, maybe two email addresses that you need to add on to a list, whether it's someone you accidentally left off or someone handed you a business card, really just for those quick one-off situations. So let's type in the email address, continue. And then I will check the box. You always have to confirm that you have permission to email any of your contacts because we're a permission-based service. And then you'll choose a list to save them to. So by default, you'll always have this general interest list in your account. So I could just add them to here, or I'm gonna go ahead and create a new list. So let's create list and let's call it testing list or you can name it something similar along those lines. That way you can just have this small little list that you can always use for testing anytime you wanna do a live send. So testing list, save that. And if I were to just scroll through here real quick, you'll see there is a ton of information. I can fill in tons of fields. If you have any of this information for someone, I'd recommend adding it because you can use it for personalization and segmentation later on. So feel free to fill any of that out, but really all that's required is email address, make sure you have permission, the list, and then save. All right, so we have a couple contacts in here now on a testing list. We can add our full list later, we'll come back to that, but for the sake of just diving in and getting started here, let's go ahead and create our email. Now, just a reminder, you can ask questions throughout the session today. Just go to that Q&A tab, type it in, either myself or like I said, I have a colleague in chat who's more than happy to answer those questions as well. So if you, if you have any questions so far, type those in and keep an eye on your, your chat over there to get an answer, but otherwise let's keep moving along. So what we're gonna do now is let's all click on marketing and we're gonna go to email. So that's definitely one place to start. You may notice as you're clicking around the account as well, there's this create button at the top. 
you can access all of the marketing campaigns from there as well, including email. So that's always an option. But now that we're on our email page, we're ready to create our first email. So let's go ahead and click create an email. And this is going to bring up our template picker. We have lots of different templates in here. You can search by industry, you can search by topic here in the search bar. You can scroll through and see what you would like to work with. We have a lot of holiday ones. You can also go with one of these layout templates. Let's click on that because this is where I want to work from. These are, they don't really have colors or pictures built in by default necessarily. They're more just layouts, different topics. So you can choose any one of these in the future when you're creating your first email for real. But for today's testing purposes, let's go with the card option. I like this one just because it's pretty simple. Um, it'll give us a sense of how things work without getting too in the weeds. And then you'll see as I'm hovering over it, I can select this with my theme because I saved that theme. Now I can just have that applied to this template. So let's do that. Select with theme. And by doing this, it is going to pull in those colors I saved automatically. It'll throw in my logo and then we can make our tweaks from there. So here is what we're starting out with. This is already starting to look good in terms of colors and branding. So now let's just get the the actual template itself the way we want. The first thing I'll do is here in the top left, let's go ahead and click the pencil. And we're just going to edit the name of the email. So Jack's Barbecue Master Template. What I want to do today is have us put together an outline. Put this together as like a template that you could use over and over for every email that you send. It's always good to have something set up ahead of time so that you don't have to recreate things in the future. All right. So from here, let's kind of just start at the top and work our way down. And we're going to want to start It's kind of here in the top right. Let's click on email settings. So this is where a lot of this may already be set up because of that work we did at the beginning with our account details. But this is the place where you would edit your subject line and pre-header. Now we're just going to stick with the filler text here because this is a master template. So that could be updated later when we're ready to fill in our content. Now the from name, we also filled that out in our account details earlier. So it's already filled in with Jack's Backyard Barbecue. This is where you want to have something recognizable. You want to use the same from name each time so they know who it's coming from. So if this isn't quite what you want it to be, you can edit it right here as well. You can also have it be a, something completely different if there's you're using this account for two different businesses or just need it to look like it's coming from someone else. I know sometimes um, like a sales organization will use constant contact and each salesperson has a list they're emailing to. You can change the from name. And then the from address, this is who once again it looks like it's coming from so just make sure it's recognizable. And the reply to address is where if someone were to hit reply on the email that they got in their inbox, it goes back to this email address. So it could be the same as the from address or it could be different. Just make sure it's a, an inbox that gets monitored just in case someone does reply. Now if you don't see the email address you want to use in here, just click add another email. It'll send you an email, you verify it, and then you'll be set there. But otherwise, our settings look good. So let's save that. That's one of the benefits of 
like I said, getting those details set up earlier is it's pretty much already done, so that's great. Now let's look at the body of the email itself. One thing I always like to do is actually have the logo at the top of every email that I send. That way it's one of the first things people see. It'll establish that branding and establish that familiarity right away. So because of the theme, I did get my logo added in. I just want to rearrange it a little bit and I'm gonna click, drag, drop it at the top. It's as easy as that. Now if my logo didn't fill in or I wanna use a different logo, that can be done under images here on the left side. Here's all the images that have been uploaded. Once again, you click and drag, so click, hold down your mouse. There's this line that shows up. That shows you where you can drop it. So if I needed to add my logo, I could drop it there at the top. Now I don't need it twice, so let's delete this. So I'll click on it, click the trash can, and delete. And the other thing you want to do with your logo is to click on it. And we actually want to make this a clickable link to our website. It's always the best practice to make all your images clickable in an email. And your logo is the perfect opportunity to give people something to click on to drive traffic back to your site. So I'm going to click link. You should see that option at the top if you're clicked on your logo. And let's link it to a web page. And then I will copy and paste. So if you want to open up your website in a new tab or if it's short enough to type in or if you have it somewhere, copy and paste it. Drop it in there. Click insert and now that's going to be linked up. All right. Now the next thing you always want to have in your templates is at least one supporting image. Images are really important to bringing your marketing communications to life and grabbing the reader's attention. So the logo is good, but we also want to have just one more picture to whether it's a product or a picture from an event that I'm promoting or just something that ties into the topic of the email. So this template gave me the perfect placeholder for an image, so I'm just going to leave that in there. If you want to add a placeholder in your master template for images, that'll be under build. And then you drag, drop, and you could add just a little placeholder like that. And this is just so you have a spot later to drop in an image when you're sending out a message. But I'm also going to, oh, let's delete this one. I'm good, good with that. Now you can have more than one supporting image, but I would say no more than two or three images just because you don't want your email to be too long and you don't want to have too many topics per email either. People spend a very limited amount of time reading emails, um, so you really need to get to the point while still grabbing their attention. All right. Now one thing I want to add in to our template is a headline. Under layouts here on the left side we have a heading and a section heading. So either one of these we could work with. Let's click drag that in. You'll see what that looks like. If you want to see what the section heading looks like it's a section heading that has a background color behind it. But I, let's click on that, delete. I'm just happy with having a headline block like this. This is going to be the perfect place to have just a short line of text telling people what the topic is, what I'm offering, what I'm trying to accomplish with this email. So I always like to have some placeholder text in there for the headline. And then this text box, we definitely want to keep in here. This is where the body text will go. You need a text box. So if you don't have a text box or need an additional one, that's under build text, 
drop that in. So you always need a place to put in that text. But I don't need both. I'll just stick with the one that's in there. Now something I'm noticing between the headline and the text box here is this blank space. There's something you can work with called spacers. You'll see that over here. There's actually one in here already that I don't want. I think this is too much space between the headline and the text. So I'm going to click on that and just trash that. I think there's even a smaller one still in there as well, but I think that looks good. You do want it spaced out a little bit, just not too much. So if you'd like to delete that as well, go ahead and do that. Now the most important part of your email is a call to action. And we recommend using buttons for your call to action. So you really don't want to send an email without asking people to do something. There's always going to be some sort of goal you have with every email you send and you need to give people the opportunity to take that action. Buttons are perfect for that because they're very clear, they stand out, people know exactly what they need to be clicking on. So you always want to have a button. If you need to add an additional button, if you accidentally deleted this button, that's the option here. Drag and drop and there's your button. But I'm going to delete this one. I'm just going to leave all of this right now is just filler text for the sake of building out a master template. All right, now another thing you want to have in every one of your templates is like a footer or just some sort of section at the bottom with all your contact information, website, and social media information. And this you'll keep the same every time because that's information people will always need. So this can be designed however you want. If you want to do it the same way I'm doing it, what I'm going to do is this little text box here, I'm going to hover over it until my mouse turns into like the four pointed arrow and drag it up. I think I want it a little higher. And then I'm going to edit that. So we'll click on that highlight and delete the text and then what I'm going to put in is the business name, address, phone number, and hours of operation. So I'll paste that in there and then I can highlight this and this works like any sort of text editor. So now that it's highlighted all my tools are at the top so I think I want this to be a little smaller. Usually 14 is a good size for the body text. And I think I won't spend a ton of time on this, but maybe we'll bold the business name as well. So on your end, put in as much information as you can real quick. You can always come back and change some of this stuff later, but just for the sake of our testing here, you can start adding your own information. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this divider option. I'm going to drag this in and once I drop it, you'll see what it is. It's just a line. I want to have two divider lines to actually set this section apart from the main section. So that's just a little stylistic thing I like doing with that. And then we don't want to forget about our social media and website. So we can use this section for that. So this template we chose does have the social media buttons, but if you're if in the future you're working with a different template and you don't see them in there, that'll be the social follow block. So you just drag drop that in and you'll see what that looks like. So that's how you'd add it in if you need to. But I don't need both, so let me click and delete that. Let's click into this one and all my tools are here at the top. So I can center that. I think that's going to look a little better. And then I do want to click edit. We can change what the buttons look like from here and there's even little styles. There's circle, square, speech bubble, and silhouette. 
and then you can go with like a black, a gray, or the colors. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the colors. Let's do just the circle. From here, so we have our buttons. We have the style we like. Now we need to actually link these up to our social pages. So from here, there is a spot for each link to each social media page. So if you want to, if you can real quick, grab those links. I'm going to copy and paste in our Facebook. We don't have X, so I'll just X the X and take that out. Our Instagram, and this is just the, if I were to go to my social media page in my browser, this is just the direct URL that's at the top that goes to that page. So Facebook, Instagram, and we can add more. There's LinkedIn, Pinterest, YouTube, etc. I also want to add web so that there's a little button for my website. So then I'll just copy and paste that in as well. You always want people to be able to access your website. We linked up the logo, but now here's another little opportunity for them to go there as well. All right, so keep adding on to this, keep adding in your links. If you weren't able to get them all in now, that's okay. You can always edit your templates in the future. But for now, this is starting to look really good. I think I'll, another thing with the spacers is you can drag them smaller, like so. Maybe I'll do something like that. But those are just kind of some of the, the minor things. Big picture, this looks really good for a master template. Just a generic outline that I can use every time. Now I will note the design tab on the left if there's any tweaks you need to make with the colors. Maybe there's something that changed since you set up your brand kit. Maybe you want just things to look a little different for this particular message. You can do that. Just go through all the options are here on the left under design, outer background, the fonts, the buttons. I'm actually gonna go into my fonts I think I would prefer the headline to be brown to kind of tie in with some of these other things. So here's my heading font. I can click on this. My saved colors are in here from the brand kit. So I just choose the brown and there now all my headlines will be brown. Okay, with that said, now I am done. So what I want to do is save this and I'm ready to fill in my content and send an email. But instead of sending this one out, I want to show you how you can save this as a template so that you can have it available in your template picker for the future. So I am actually, now that this is saved, I'm going to come back to marketing and email because we just want to get out of this. And then we will see it saved now as a draft. So to save it as a template, that is just going to be this three dots. Save as template. And then you name the template. So let's just call it Jack's Barbecue Saved Master Template. Save that. So now that that's saved, I can find it with the rest of the templates in my account. So I could keep editing this draft, send it out, but I want to show you where to find the saved template. So we'll actually start again by clicking create an email. And let's say the restaurant has a brisket promotion we want to send out. So now our process is we come in here, we go to marketing, email, create an email, and you'll notice there's a new tab that says saved templates. So let me click over to that. And here it is. There's that saved template. Now you can have more than one saved template. So maybe you save the one we've been working on today just as your test, but 
when you're ready to set up your full master template, you can save that as well and give yourself an, a little selection to choose from. But let's go ahead, I'm going to select our template here. It'll open up as a new draft. And I do need to name it. So that's here. You always want to name any campaign you're doing, just so it's not saved as an untitled campaign. So this will be our brisket promo for Jack's Barbecue. These names are always just internal, just kind of for your own self, so it can be whatever you want there. You could even just call it test for now. So you remember that it's, or webinar email. So you remember you created this during the webinar, whatever you want. All right, so because this is mostly set up, this is gonna be super easy for us to put together. So the first thing I wanna do is make sure I have my supporting image. So let's go to images. And I'm actually gonna use an image that was pulled in from my brand kit. But if you need to, you can click to upload images and you can upload them from your computer, social networks, we have stock images, and upload from phone. There's actually a constant contact app, both in Google Play and the Apple App Store. And with the, the app, you just search for constant contact, and you can upload images, view reporting, create social posts, and organize contacts. So lots of stuff you can do, including images. So pictures you've taken that are saved on your phone, perfect place to grab those from. But let's close this. So I don't need to do the upload because I already have my brisket here. So I'll drag, drop. If you ever needing to replace an image, just drag it on top of it and it'll switch it out. Now, if you remember, we need to make our images clickable. Just make that always a rule of thumb. Any image needs to be clickable to something. So I'm going to click the image, click link, link this to a web page. Now this you might want to have linked to something a little bit more specific, not just the home page. Take whatever your call to action is and link the image up to that. Since the image should be tying into that whole message, you can link it up. So in our case, the call to action is going to be for them to make a reservation. So we're putting in the reservation link behind the image just to give them another opportunity for that. Now let's hop to our text box. This is where you'll fill in your main message, your body text. And just think about how will this help the reader? Why should they care? What's the value of this? And if you know what you need to send, what you want to send, but need a little help phrasing it. We actually have, if you click into the text box, we have all our tools, including Write with AI. Now, if you don't see that, we also have our AI content generator under tools here at the top. So that's a place that would take you out of this template, but you can go in and generate some text, copy and paste it back in here. You can even create templates from that. Um, but for us, let's delete the filler text and write with AI. So then you'll just type in what the message is so that it can generate something for us. So I know that I have a brisket promotion available. It's a buy one, get one free. Offer and Sunday. I want to make sure that's included at 9 p.m. And make a reservation. That's the call to action. So I want to make sure that's included. So you're just typing in brief description of the message. We have some settings where you can indicate the tone and the length. I'm going to go with a, let's do enthusiastic tone and I'll just leave the length default. Usually you don't want your message to be more than 20 lines of text. 
However, you do want to give enough information for them to take action. So sometimes you might need a little bit more than 20 lines of text if there's a lot of details they need to know before making a decision. It could even be a little less than 20 lines of text though too. Because like I said, people don't spend a lot of time reading emails, so you really need to make it as concise as possible. But let's have that created for us. And this is what I came up with. Brisket promotion alert. Don't miss out on our exclusive buy one get one free. I think that all sounds good. So I will insert the text and there we go. So on your end right now, if you just want to play around with something, type in a few words, add in your content, then that will be a good thing to do there. Now, Let's not forget about the headline. So now that we have our message, you just want your headline to be a short one or two sentence type verbiage that reflects what you're offering, what the message is about, what you're trying to accomplish. I'm just going to, for the sake of time, pull in, I like this brisket promotion alert. Although when you're doing this for real, you might want to craft it a little bit differently. You could even try the AI option there to get a little help. But for the sake of time, let's just go with that. Now let's edit our button. So first we want this to say what the call to action is. Register or not register. Make a reservation now. So just use that action-oriented language. And then to link it, this is kind of like the image. You just come up here to this link option at the top, click web page, and there was that link I used with the image. We'll just use that same one, insert, and we're done. So because we have this set up as a master template, we just added the picture, paragraph, and call to action. Everything else is set and we're ready to send. So hopefully on your end you're able to get some stuff filled in. If it's not fully filled out now, that's okay. I want us to walk through and send the email together just so you can see that process. Now before you send an email, make sure to preview and test it. Preview just kind of shows you what it looks like desktop, mobile, it's mobile responsive so you can see how that'll look. If you go to send test, same view but over here you can type up to five email addresses and send it just as a test send. If you need to get approval from someone at your company or just want to see what it looks like in your inbox, you can do that. Also, by the way, when you're previewing it, all your links are live so you can also go through and click on everything to make sure they work. Now I did want to point out this inbox option you may have seen. If you want to save time and make sure your email looks good in inboxes without a lot of test sends, because you could test things out by just sending tests to a bunch of different people, compare, make sure they look good, or you could just use this inbox preview option and it'll show you what it'll look like on different devices automatically. So you don't even have to send it anywhere. You just look at it, make sure it looks good. It allows you to maybe catch or fix things that don't look as great. So if you're interested in that, you can check the box, click accept. That's $10 a month and it just is a, a really good testing tool when you're sending, especially early on. If you're wanting just a little more confidence in your design, that's great. But for now, I'm going to close out of that. Also, check for errors is great. That'll make sure everything's linked up, all your default text is out of there, stuff like that. But let's say we've done all that. Our tests look good. We are ready to send. So to do that, let's all click continue. And this is where that we made that small little test list at the beginning of the webinar. This is where that's going to come into play, where we can actually send this just to get the full, well-rounded process there. So on this page, you'll choose the list. So let's all choose our testing list. This is where you would edit that subject line and pre-header. 
preheaders like a subtitle. It's the line of text that shows up under the subject line in the inbox. If you're having trouble write, writing your subject line in preheader, the recommended subject lines and recommended preheaders, that's also a little AI tool. So it'll scan the content of your email and write, give you a few options to choose from. And just make sure all the rest of this is filled out as well. The physical address is required by law before you send. So that's why we set that up at the beginning of the webinar so that we don't have to do it now. But if you weren't able to do it then, now's the time to edit that address and fill that in. And from here, you can send now, schedule from later. Let's all send our email now. So click send now. Because it's only you on the list, you can just send it and we'll get to experience the full experience of sending an email in constant contact. Once you send on the constant contact side of things, it's processing, it's getting that ready to go. And now we have just our details and reporting. So open rates, click rates is how many have clicked on the link. Let me actually show you what it looks like in my inbox. So hopefully you're seeing something nice and pretty like this on your end as well. And now that I've opened it, sometimes it takes a minute to refresh, but let's see if we reload that. Once people start opening it, that'll show up here in your reporting and if people click on links. So it hasn't refreshed yet, but it will now that I've opened it up in my inbox and there we go. We all just sent our first email in constant contact. So with that part set, I th think we all at least know how to put something together, send it out. Now we need to have our actual contact list in here so that when we're ready to do the real live send that uh, we need our list to send it to. So we'll switch over to contacts. Now I just want to give one more reminder if any questions have come up throughout this whole email building process about emails or anything else type those in the Q&A tab and we'll make sure our chatter or myself gets you an answer. But let's switch over. We'll click all contacts. And I just want to show you a couple different ways. So we already saw one way to add a contact. So if you click on add contacts again, we already saw create a new contact. So we know how to add one at a time if we needed to do that. Now I also want to show you upload from file. This is actually one of the most common ways to add contacts because whether you've compiled all your contacts in a spreadsheet, just kind of yourself, or a lot of d databases or CRMs allow you to export your contacts to a spreadsheet, or you can export them out of Gmail or Outlook, then that file that you get can be uploaded. So let me show you a quick example. This is a file that I'm going to upload. Really, you just need to have a separate column for each field. Email address is required. Everything else is optional, but I do recommend uploading any information you have for someone. So in our case, we also are going to include first name, last name, zip code, and favorite food. Let's say we, we know our customers, we have a way to collect that information. I'm going to save that in our account as well. So to upload that, I'll click browse your computer. If you have a file handy right now, go ahead and follow along with me here. So let's find where it's saved on my computer. And if you want to search your own computer, do that as well. It's going to show the first few rows of the file. If you don't see all the rows, that's okay. It's really just showing you a few so that you can match up each field, which I had each column labeled in my spreadsheet so I was able to match four of them up for me but favorite food isn't a standard field in constant contact so I can create a custom field favorite food 
and you can do date fields as well. If it's not a birthday or anniversary, we do have fields for birthday and anniversary. So favorite food, create, and now I'm going to be able to save that information as well. So now that I've indicated, mapped out all my fields, I click continue. I'll confirm I have permission to email them. Let's add them to, let's create a new list. We'll call this our promotions list. Create that, so now I can keep adding on to this for the people I want to email promotions to. Click upload and it'll add those in. Now the other way to get a group of contacts in here is you can just copy and paste them in as well. So if you just have a smaller group of people or they're not saved in a spreadsheet, you're just kind of have to copy and paste them out of different programs or whatever it is, you'll go back to add contacts. Let's do the type in or paste contacts. There's two ways to do it here. One is typing in several at a time. I don't like this option because it just requires a lot of manual typing. If you're going to be typing anyways, you might as well type them into a spreadsheet and upload that. But it does allow you to have email address, but then four other fields as well. Now I like doing this paste names and emails. With this you can only do first name, last name, and email address. So if you need more information, maybe go with the spreadsheet as well. But let's say I have just this little notepad of contacts. I've copied and pasted these out of like an email I got or something like that. So I just copy, paste, and if you don't have first and last name, that's fine. You can do just email addresses as well. And then it's just as easy as clicking continue, clicking the plus sign, clicking the list. We'll add these on to our promotions list. Click apply, import, and now those are in there as well. So now all our contacts are uploaded. Hopefully you were able to get a few contacts added yourself as well. Let me hop back to this just to point out a couple other things. So we do have Google contact integration. So if you use Gmail, you can bring those over. And then there's just other tools. You can hear some of the common ones. You can click over here to find integrations. And also that app I mentioned earlier that you can use for images. You can also upload contacts through that as well from your phone. All right, I want to switch gears now and let's all go back to the home page. Just a couple things to point out here and then we'll wrap up. So now that we've been doing some work in here, let's take a look at what we have access to on the dashboard. So we have our create button up here. This is another place to create. So we have marketing, create, create. Any one of those will take you into creating an email. Now we have our recent campaign showing up since we've been working on some stuff. Those are now in here. From this, the three dots allows you to delete, save as template, reporting, details, resend, download and print, preview. So there's a lot you can access there. We also have learn tips and tricks. So kind of towards the bottom here, you'll have just lots of good resources to help you keep learning. You also get a glance at your performance. So your total contacts, average open rate, contact growth. These are, I just grew by 21 contacts because I just uploaded those. And then just always make sure to go to the question mark. If you have questions, type it in the question. There's tons of articles along with many other resources here. And if you do want to talk to a live person, go to contact us. There's the phone number and chat information for support. But with that, let's go ahead and wrap up. Make sure I get to a couple questions. 
and I'll tell you, just review some of those resources again as well. So at this point, you're ready to take the information you learned today and apply it. So if you haven't yet, move forward by finishing that master template we're working on. Or at least if it's not completely finalized, that's fine. At least just send it to yourself so you can get an idea of how that all looks and works. Once you do have your master template created, that creates a nice template you can save and then start putting something together to send out for real. And then also upload your contact list, get that ready to go, and continue exploring the dashboard of your account. You'll be able to find all those additional features that sets you up for success. And we are here to help, whether you need help coming up with content, setting up a marketing plan, or just need someone to do the work for you. We have marketing services that can be personalized to fit your needs and goals. Your dedicated marketing expert will make it easy for you throughout the account setup process and beyond to work with strategizing, developing, and implementing a successful marketing plan. Rates start as low as $60 a month to work one-on-one -on -one with a marketing expert. So I'm going to share a little link here on your screen. This will take you to a page that talks more about those services and there's a place to request a phone call. So you can just have someone give you a call, you tell them what you need, they'll tell you what's the best program for you and you can sign up and get going with that. But with that, let's answer a few questions here. Keep typing those in the Q&A window. I see my colleague has answered a lot in chat already. So that is awesome. Let's see if there's a few I can address now. All right. Yeah, I see a few coming in already. So Travis asks, can I link to anything other than a website? Yeah, let's go back to our accounts. Let's go back into this draft. So you may have noticed this before, and I know it's going through it a little quickly, so let's point it out again. When you are adding a link, so let's say the button here, click the button, click link. There's more choices. So we were just linking it up to web pages, but you can also link to an email address, which if someone were to click on that, it'll open up an email address to you in their email program. You can link to a document. So this is where you could upload like a PDF or a Word document, and then it'll link to that. So it's kind of like if you need to send an attachment, you'd want to do this document link. You can link it to a landing page. You can create landing pages in constant contact. And the other one to point out is phone. So you can actually link it to a phone number. And then if someone's checking this email on their mobile phone, they click on it, it'll open it up so they can call you. So that might, I could have even done a phone number link for the phone number here. Let's do that real quick. So link, phone, put in the phone number, insert. And now people, it's kind of hard to tell because it's just bolded, but I could work with the design, make sure it's a different color, underlined, and then they click on it and can call. Great question. Let's see what else we got. Oh, here, this ties in well. James says, when you added the link, I saw an option that said click segmentation. What does that mean? Yeah, so let's go back. We'll just link it to a web page. So click segmentation. This allows you to set it up to where if someone clicks on the link in your email, they'll be added to a contact list automatically. So I could have set this up to where anytime someone clicked on the link to make a reservation, Maybe they get added to like a brisket list. So then the next time I have a promotion like this, I can send this just to the people who clicked that link. I know they are interested because they took an action and I can start building out some segmentation just from using that feature. Betty asks, is it poss possible to personalize the email with their name? Yeah, so if I click into the text box, Put my cursor that'll be under this insert greeting tag 
So you can have it fill in, it, it'll say hello, or you can change what that word is, first name, and whatever name you have saved under your contacts, it will fill that in. One last question and then I'll wrap up. Taylor asks, what's a good day and time to send an email? Yeah, that's a big question and hard to give a one size fits all answer. So what you just want to think about is your audience, when they might be most active in their inbox. Once you send a few emails, you can check your open and click rates, see when you're getting the most engagement, and then from there make a decision on a good day and time to send based on those results. But with that, we are pretty much out of time. So let me just wrap up by reminding you about all the great resources. So if you have any questions about the topics we've discussed or want further guidance, we have a variety of resources. We have our new customer hub at constantcontact.com slash get dash started. There's tutorials, on-demand courses, more of these webinars, and a link to schedule a one-on-one -on -one call if you're a new customer and haven't sent yet. I'm gonna send that link to you in an email and in that email will be a recording to this webinar and the handout. Um, there was a, on the right side, you can download the handout real quick now too if you want. Also, I just encourage you to click that question mark icon I showed you earlier to get all the resources. And I do wanna let you know when you close out of the webinar today, there's gonna be a survey that pops up. So just as a, a final quick task for you, it's just a few quick questions. Love to hear your feedback and just let us know what you think. Other, th Other than that, thanks for joining us today. Reach out to those resources if you need anything and have a good rest of your day.